That wasn't just any man, that was no clerk, that was God himself. The song that's playing right now is Heaven is a Place on Earth. <laughs> Guys, manifestation is so real, that's crazy. The purpose of the vlog is to document little things like that. Little manifestations are happening around us all the time. like my favorite place in Denver. My second video posted six hours ago and it has four views. Oh my gosh, this is like my worst fear. Like putting out art and then no one giving a shit. It's terrible. Fuck, it's real for me, jeez. I woke up this morning definitely feeling a little bit nervous. I feel nervous about money. It takes a long time to edit the vlog, but not near as long as it ever used to. I still feel like the vlog is a part of my soul's purpose. It still feels really exciting. It's not that the fear reduces the excitement around it. It's just simply that it's there. So what I'm doing is I'm tapping into the parts of myself. I'm trying to see what those parts need. The one that has fear around money is really like the 16 year old part. And that 16 year old part that I have, he was really like created when my family basically lost everything financially around that same age. And he developed strategies to deal with the pressure. One of those strategies is running away. It's just that now that is not an option. So I have to talk to him and be like, buddy, we ain't running, we working. <laughs> I'm trying out right now the gimbal that follows me around and then I have a, a little mic on me, which is kind of cool. So the mic finally charged yesterday. And now we have a bit of a different setup. And I feel like this is maybe kind of fun because now I can like do things hands-free and I can talk while I'm doing them, which might create more interesting video. What do you guys think? So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at this morning. I woke up feeling kind of nervous. I had a dream about being on a plane and they decided that instead of a runway, they wanted the plane to take off on a busy highway. The logic of the pilots were, guys, all the other runways are full, so we're gonna take off on this highway. And we crashed and I died. <laughs> I don't know if there's a corollary here. Maybe there is. If there's any dream interpreters in my small community, let me know. Okay, I think this will be kind of fun. This should be kind of a fun shot. Since I have to use a special app for this, the thing that I hope is that it actually organizes itself in alignment with the other clips. Um, otherwise the movement is like not really that useful because it just becomes really disorganized. And I care more about speed of editing and speed of putting this together than, than movement. But I don't know, I'll play around with it. An idea that popped up is I'm not running away from something, I'm running towards something, but I'm still running <laughs> and I'm running fast. <laughs> I got my first vlog published, I got the first newsletter done. Now I feel like I just wanna keep those going. I'm not against short form content. Short form content is really great. I think I've just struggled with creating it because I haven't felt in alignment in other places. So I think the move now is to promote the first newsletter, edit some of these vlogs, and then pull short form content and start actually creating more short form content. I'm getting the message too that I need to call in clients, like inviting people to work with me, saying, guys, I have an amazing offer. I'm getting crazy results for people in my coaching. Like, come work with me. I haven't really been doing that. I've only been documenting my story. And I'm thinking that this is plenty of documentation of my story. The whole purpose of the vlog is to document my process and my story. I'm starting to think as Instagram as a lot more for inviting people in, inviting people to work with me, especially on stories. So I think I'm gonna change the way that I'm thinking about, I think I'm gonna think about changing the way, I'm gonna change the way that I think about Instagram stories. So that's where we're starting out today. It is 5.50 a.m. I woke up at 4.50 and I kinda diddled around in my bed for a little bit. I didn't diddle around with myself. I just laid there. You'll be happy to know. <laughs> All right, loves, let's get started. I also have to get more yerba mate today. Yerba mate, more mate. I cannot afford to keep drinking tea that I don't like. Drinking, life is too short to drink things that you don't like. Okay, let's get to it. I am getting frustrated and overwhelmed. I'm gonna meditate for a sec. Something very interesting just happened in that practice actually. I was feeling really stressed 
I woke up this morning being like, fuck, I'm gonna run out of money. This is not gonna work. This is gonna be so much work to have this work and I have to do it so fast. What I realized is that I actually haven't been doing enough of a spiritual practice in the morning. I've been doing very little and then jumping straight into work. I think this has worked for me because I've been following my intuition, I've been following my excitement, but the download that just came through for me in that practice that I just did was almost like a structure for the vlog. It's a structure for my life and a structure for the vlog. It's like modeling healthy habits, modeling having a healthy morning routine. Like that's a piece that I've actually been missing and I didn't realize it until just now when it like literally got downloaded through and it gave me like a step-by-step -step looking kind of like structure timeline looking thing. Um, the practices that I just used to reduce my stress, one is tapping or emotional freedom technique. It goes off of meridian points in the body and you say affirmations to yourself. So what I was saying to myself was, even though I have this stress in my body right now, it's all going to work out. And I'm using both hands obviously when I'm doing this, but um, tapping on meridian points around my body even though I have this stress in my body right now, it's all going to work out. And I'm breathing deeply while I'm saying this, I'm ballooning out my belly. Even though I have this stress in my body right now, it's all going to work out. And I'm talking to myself and doing this practice and this really works, guys. So the different points are your hands, both hands, right under your collarbone. You're breathing deeply while you're doing this. Right under your chin here, your lips. Even though I have this stress in my body, I completely love and accept myself. It's all gonna work out. Even though I have this stress in my body, right along the eyelids, just like, or uh, right along the sides of the eyes, you can use three fingers here. Two fingers right above, or right on the eyebrows here. Even though I have this stress in my body, it's all going to work out. I trust the universe. Everything is gonna work out for me. I know this looks kind of funny, but this really works, try it. Deep breath in. Top of the head, so all four fingers, like right on the crown of the head. Or maybe even like a little bit forward. I'm not an expert at this, guys. I've just started doing this consistently a couple weeks ago and I love it. Under the armpit. I kind of, I don't always do this one and I don't actually know really where to tap. I kind of tap everywhere under the other armpit. Even though I have this stress in my body, I completely love and accept myself. This is really good for acute stress and that's why I just did it. I was feeling pretty stressed and overwhelmed. I was like, I feel like I have so much work to do and I don't know where to start. I don't know which direction to go. And so I was like, I just need to meditate. I need to come back into center so that I have access to my intuition because without access to my intuition, we can't go fast. We're gonna end up burning a bunch of energy working on things that the mind thinks that we need to do, but that may not be the path to actually go if we want speed and manifestation ability. So now that I'm a little bit more centered, the realizations that came through were, was like, yeah, modeling healthy habits and starting with the newsletter to create short form content. So I'm gonna stick with this for a little bit. I'm gonna work with this. By the way, I think it's totally okay that sometimes we fall off of our spiritual practices, we fall off of our wellness practices, sometimes for months, sometimes for years, sometimes we just have never had them. What I'm trying to do with myself is just be patient. It's like, oh, I didn't meditate. Oh man, I'm not spiritual today. It's like, no. Choose the tools that work best for you on the day. For me, I know that meditation works every day. Meditation is always good, unless you're being chased by a tiger or something, and then your spiritual practice is getting the fuck away from the tiger. But there's certain things, there's certain practices that are pretty much always gonna be good. What I'm noticing from the past week is that I actually haven't really been meditating that much. I haven't really been doing breath work. I've been mostly jumping into work. One, because it's felt so exciting, and two, because I'm kind of running away from a tiger, I feel like. I've also been doing a lot of parts work and inner child work, and that's been really helpful. So that's what my spiritual practice is currently comprised of. I think the download that I'm getting now is like, almost like an easing into consistency again, to, to calm my nervous system, and also to model it. So that's what's coming up. After doing that little meditation, it feels like what's actually important is getting the vlog and newsletter really solidified and committed to. And I'm getting this little ping that like the short form content will start to come from that. So I'm gonna trust that. I'm gonna go get some mate because I really want some. This is also a good example of how my mind, but I know a lot of people can relate to this. My mind comes up with things that I think I need to be doing. And what I'm practicing is being gentle with that. I love having plans, I love having intention, I love putting things in the calendar the night before, but it's not running away and being undisciplined to pay attention to intuition. I find that it usually helps us to go way faster. There's a part of me that really doesn't like the idea of using morning productive hours to go to the grocery store to get tea. I have this like slave driver part of me. 
Barrett, you have to be working all the time. I'm gonna have to talk to him. I don't know if I have really a relationship with him yet. This feels kind of new to me. Well, he doesn't feel new to me. I've known him for a very long time, but I haven't uh, actually connected. So I want my mate. I can feel that it's a good idea. Yay, sprouts. Where is my mate? Ah, here we go. It's gotta be over here somewhere. Oh, this is bags. Can't have bags. All they have is bags. And I'm very upset about it. <laughs> They did have it. An angel of a man just came by and he was like, what are you looking for, sir? I was like, I want mate and I'm fucking pissed. And uh, <laughs> he was like, oh, we do have it. It's back here. He literally just like walked over, stuck his hand in this little hole. That wasn't just any man. That was no clerk. That was God himself. The song that's playing right now is heaven is a place on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, manifestation is so real. That's crazy. I got my mate. I was about to have to go to Natural Grocers, which only which opens at 8:27 a.m. Unacceptable. Maybe the reason why I wanted to come get mate is to remind myself that the purpose of the vlog is not working my ass off into the ground. The purpose of the vlog is to document little things like that. Little manifestations are happening around us all the time. When we trust our intuition to guide us, a lot of times things will work out. I was prepared for it not to work out. I was prepared to go back home or I was actually about to go get espresso. But I was like, I should not do that. <laughs> when I drink espresso, I get way too intense. I get way too intense. There's two things there. One, I like the way my eyes look in the sun. Uh, two things there. One, I don't feel as nervous going into grocery stores with the camera, which is kind of fun. And two, obviously that manifestation, that was awesome. All right, now we can get back to work and see what happens. I can't get over that. I was looking, I didn't dig deep enough into that shelf, but like I definitely looked and the fact that it's heaven is a place on earth was playing after that is crazy. I love manifesting. It's the best. It's the best way to live. It honestly is. Honestly, when little things like that happen, I feel a lot more confident that this project is going to work because if I can trust in the universe to support me in the creation of this, then that's all I need. Because then it's not just me, I actually have an assistant. Assistant is like a little bit low of a word, but you guys get what I'm saying. I have a collaborator. Well, let's go, dude. Ah, I love storing it in this little glass jar. I got my tea! <laughs> like I said, if you want someone less annoying to follow, you gotta follow somebody else. There's also a part of me that kind of just knows that following my intuition gives me that kind of reward. It's not a part of me that knows, it's my like authentic self, it's my soul. And I see it over and over and over again. When I follow my intuition, it ends up working out for me. So that's like the whole purpose of the vlog. It's the whole purpose of the work that I do with clients. It's not to be irresponsible and undisciplined. It's just to say, let's have a collaborative experience with the universe. Let's practice trusting that things are going to work out for us. And the more that we start to see manifestations happen, the more trust we develop in that process and in ourselves. And that helps us to feel a lot more calm and grounded in life. Because when we're connected to source energy, we're rooted to the earth. We're rooted to source at the most fundamental level. So that really helps you feel emotionally calm when life feels hectic because you can trust that you're not alone in the process. You're actually in a collaborative experience, a collaborative process with the universe. And that's such a beautiful place to be. Being in high frequency is what life is supposed to feel like. It's not that low frequency is bad. Low frequency is great. Low emotion, pain, suffering, powerlessness, shame, guilt. All of those emotions are very valuable because they cause us to reevaluate where we are, to make changes. But being in high frequency, being in gratitude and appreciation, exploration, fun, all of these things are states that I wanna cultivate because it's just more fun to live life from that place. And I believe that we're actually designed to live life from that place. I believe that the fundamental state of a human being is joy, love, peace, freedom, gratitude. And I know a lot of you guys feel the same way which is why we're building this little community here on YouTube and elsewhere. So sending you a little bit of love and encouragement this morning. And um, I don't know why I'm closing it like that. That's how I used to close it. Guys, sending you love and encouragement, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, the reminder I'm getting today is like, it's gonna work. Be patient, 
one day at a time, one step at a time, one intuitive ping at a time, allow it to guide you to abundance and joy. And the desire to go get mate this morning just happened to be the little ping. Cause I was feeling really stressed out earlier. I was like, fuck, I woke up with like, ah, oh, it's not gonna work. I need to find a job. Oh, what if I have to vlog and get a job? Again, I'm open to it, but the stress was like, ah. and I followed my intuition to help me feel better. And still only 7.45, so. Now I think we can get back to work and feel better about it. One thing I do tell my clients is like, if you're feeling like I was feeling this morning, if you're feeling crazy, if you're feeling down, then a lot of times there's not really much you can do anyways. In terms of getting work done, the work that actually matters in that moment is typically not the work that your brain thinks it is. It's the emotional and energetic work to get you back in alignment with source energy. Because otherwise we just operate from our head and we're like trying to force ourselves to do things and we end up actually just exhausting ourselves more and spiraling into stress and, and chaos. Stress. <laughs> Spiler, sp spiraling into stress and chaos. So it's super hard to practice. But if you're feeling crazy, if you can allow yourself to just say, okay, what's the next right move and navigate that way, I find that it typically turns out way better. If you're feeling really down, a lot of times that next move is just to do nothing. When you're at the lowest ends of the vibrational scale, the best move is typically to just be with it. Feel the emotions, be there, do nothing, no big decisions. Don't call someone to have a big decision-making conversation. Don't make the plan for your life, just be there. Allow it to pass. A lot of teaching things this morning. Okay, the thing that's feeling most exciting is actually editing the vlog. And this is really cool for me to go back through and like just see myself it's crazy how much I forget what happens during the day. The journal creates that effect, but the vlog even creates it a little bit more. I have two vlogs live here. This is so fun. So the way that I wrote this description was I actually had Notion AI go back into the journal for this day, for February 27th. And I just went down and I asked it like, hey, what did I learn this day? Oops. I said, hey, what did I learn this day? Uh, make a summary for me and put it in first person. I kind of like this because it feels a lot more like a journal entry. This is probably not the best way to do YouTube descriptions, but there's something that's like kind of nice about it. I like the rawness or just the messiness. And I wrote that in there. And then I have this one. So again, I asked Notion AI, hey, what did I learn today? Write this in first person. And then I kind of added stuff to it and like, but it, yeah, it was cool. It's cool that Notion AI can take the things that I'm learning in the journal and like create little summaries for me and stuff. So I just did that, I did that again down here. Pretty sweet. Also learning that it's kind of nice to have like a trailer at the beginning of my vlogs. So I did this little like quick quick cut uh, trailer where I have music and stuff attached to it. So I, I, um, so I'm playing around with that. Also, Descript can add video really easily. So I'm talking about parts work here. So I'm talking about parts work here and I'm, I'm finding that Descript can actually add overlay video really easily. So while I'm talking to camera about parts work, I can actually like help people visualize what it actually looks like, like when you're doing parts work. Literally, sometimes this is what visualizations look like to me. Like sometimes I'm looking at myself like this, like literally just like that, except obviously I'm not a woman. <laughs> I'm looking at myself during this, this parts work and like I'm looking at the 16 year old version of myself. I'm playing with the four year old version of myself like in a field, like it literally looks like that. So when I'm talking about parts work and inner child work, it's literally going in, I keep saying literally, it's going internal and having these kinds of visualizations. Um, I talked a little bit right there about tapping into your body. It's like finding your body where you feel the part being active. You can talk to them directly and then you can actually see them. And when you see them and visualize them, that's one of the best ways that you can give them what they need. So for my like uh, five-year-old part, where is he? I'm not feeling him right now, but for my five-year-old part, whenever he feels like scared or like he needs love, I'll go in and I'll visualize him like out in nature, out in a field or something. And I'll say, hey buddy, what do you need? And a lot of times he'll just tell me like, I wanna be held or like, I want, you know, X, Y, Z. 
and I'll visualize myself just giving that to him. I've also seen my parts show up kind of like this too, or something like this where I'm actually seeing them from afar and they're like feeling dejected and sad. In those cases, I'm like, I go and walk up to them and I kneel down, I'm like, hey buddy, what's going on? And I talk, I literally talk to them like a child. Like that's how I talk to them. And they talk to me, like my five-year-old parts, like, I don't know what's happening. I, I feel really sad. I feel really upset because of X, Y, Z things. And they, they'll like communicate. Parts work is so wild, guys. When you start communicating with these parts though, it creates a definite emotional calmness in the body. You can kind of see now why this morning I felt really stressed because I was gonna try and force myself to like work in the way that my mind was gonna sequence it. But when I followed what felt good, the thing that actually felt really good was doing the vlog first. It just took me like an hour of like bouncing around between things to feel into like, wait, what is the, what's the thing that actually I feel guided to? I think what I'm seeing with the vlog, part of what was bothering me with the vlog was when I edited the first one, it felt really unpolished. And so I started to feel nervous in my body, like the parts of myself started to feel nervous that it wasn't gonna be valuable and that it was like all over the place. Because the first vlog that I shot actually was, I literally just like started filming and then just started filming like whatever the hell without, without that much intention. I kind of knew that I wanted it to be like a spirituality manifestation vlog. I knew the purpose of it. I knew that I wanted it to be me documenting my own evolutionary process. But since I had only edited that first one, I was like, that's all that was in my mind. That was the only representation of what the vlog is that was in my mind at that time. And so I think some of the stress was coming from like, oh, it's not polished. Like who's gonna watch this? This is not gonna work. So when I went and edited the second one, I was like, wait, this is cool. Like, this is kind of fun. This is a, this feels a lot more fun than the, than the first one did for me. When I was editing the first one, the first one did feel really fun. What's needed is the energy and the movement forward. Okay, so I'm really glad that I, I trusted that. I'm glad I got the, the mate this morning. I'm glad I had the little manifestation where the guy put his arm way back into the dark hole and pulled out a bag of mate for me. That guy also just came out of nowhere too. It was crazy, it was amazing, beautiful. The song, it's, it's Heaven on Earth is playing above me and I'm guided to like what the, what the next step is. Now I feel a lot more energized. I feel a lot more energized to work. I feel a lot more refocused on my purpose and what's important. And I feel like I'm trusting a lot more. Like I can feel that I'm like coming back into the trusting in my body and the parts of me that were causing a little bit of dissonance earlier in the morning feel more calm too. Guys, I fucking love parts work. <laughs> I love all of the work that I'm doing. I do want to talk about to be magnetic really quick. The reason why I'm so obsessed with parts work right now is because of this course to be magnetic. This course was created by this woman named Lacey Phillips. She is like a fucking genius when it comes to manifestation. She really understands how this works. So this whole authentic code thing where I have journalism, play, I have it at the top of my notion journal here. So I have journalism, play, spirituality, and freedom. This whole thing of like journalism, the hypnosis that that came out of was a to be magnetic hypnosis. So Lacey Phillips calls these deep imaginings. And so as a part of the course, you have these hypnosis that you listen to. And so these four points came out of that. But the reason why I'm so obsessed with inner child work right now is because of how Lacey lays out this idea. She says that the, basically the core formula for manifestation is these three things, unblocking, expanding, and aligned, and aligned action. Unblocking, expanding, aligned action. The process of inner child work is called unblocking. That's what she calls it. This idea is such a revelation for me, one, because I didn't even realize that unblocking was a necessary and needed thing. I thought I needed more productivity tools. I thought I needed to work harder. I thought I needed more energy and to eat healthier. I thought I needed to let go of addictions. All of those things are true, but there's an underlying reason why I'm using addictions. There's an underlying reason why I'm like so afraid of creating a vlog that I need to lean into distractions and addictions. Basically it's unblocking. It's because the inner child is afraid for, I'll put this in context of me. My inner child is afraid of being seen, especially the 16 year old, um, probably some other ones in there too. So every time I get closer and closer to my authenticity, I fall back into distraction because my inner community here is like, yo, dude, this is way too much. We can't do this. So the process of unblocking is going in 
and using tools like this. So Lacey has all of her own hypnosis that she does and all that good stuff. What I've been doing is just doing like self work and self hypnosis where I'm just going in and I don't need a licensed person to do this. I mean, maybe I haven't gone deep enough. I don't know, but it's literally just going in and giving them love. Like reading this book, you know, like I said, maybe, maybe you need someone licensed. I don't know. But in my experience, me just going in, listening to these parts, giving them love, saying, hey, what do we need here? Speaking to them like the age that they are, respecting them for who they are, loving them, that has like unlocked the ability for more authentic creative expression. Piece of unblocking is such a game changer for me because I've been doing coaching for almost two years now. And the patterns that I see with clients is like, I have all of these other tools, but I could see that there's like a hole in my coaching game. I was like, there's something that I'm missing and I don't understand what it is. Now I understand that the piece I've been missing is the unblocking, it's inner child work. It's apparently there's other tools that you can use for this process on, of unblocking. But this is such a big realization for me because it was so frustrating to be like, oh my gosh, how do I create change? How do I actually create change quickly for somebody or for myself? I'm still in the process of learning, obviously, but this is so fucking cool and exciting to me because it's like, ah, finally, I understand something that I've been like dancing around the edges of and being like, I don't get this. I don't understand how this works. <laughs> I've been dancing around the edges of it for so long and internal family systems is like literally an answer to my prayer. It is such an amazing manifestation. So that's why I've been so obsessed with this practice over the past week or two. Yeah, it's literally like starting to change my life in like two weeks. So I highly recommend you guys get this book, No Bad Parts. You can probably do some of this with yourself. Like if you read this book and you kind of understand the, the base level principles, I think you can do a fair amount of this work with yourself. Um, and there's also a bunch of therapists if you want to just go ahead and invest. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I do with this with clients. And even with the limited skills that I have, it, it works really well. Okay, this is good. Okay, more is coming through. Yes, internal family system, parts work. It's not just like an effective therapy modality. It's a shift in perspective for how I view what the mind is, for how I understand what the ego is. The mind and the ego are an energy. It's not just the brain. These are different parts. <laughs> These are uh, the way that Dick Schwartz describes them in No Bad Parts. He says that these are little inner spiritual beings. These are little inner spiritual beings that live within us and they're in a little family. One of my clients, after doing this work, he's like, dude, I feel like I have like my team. Like, I feel like I have my boys now. And that's how I feel too. I'm actually getting chills as I say that. I feel like I have my team. I feel like my team is on board. My team trusts me to drive the car. A lot of the stress that comes in everyday life, I'm learning, is that the inner team doesn't trust us to drive the car. Imagine that you're in a car with four children. I have a 16 year old, I have a four year old, I have a five year old and probably some other ones. What if I'm driving the car and then all of a sudden I look over to the 16 year old, I'm like, oh gosh, wait, where are we going? And then I look back to the four and five year old, I'm like, oh my God, we're running out of gas. Wait guys, where are we going? And I start freaking out at the wheel while going 70 miles an hour. How do we think those little kids are gonna start reacting? What kind of emotions are they gonna be feeling when the driver, their adult, their leader turns around and starts freaking the fuck out? Or starts, or says, hey, I really shouldn't go into this canyon. I know that this canyon is, is extremely dangerous and it never ends well for me when I go into this canyon. I'm going to start driving into this canyon. And the 16-year-old and 5-year-old and 4-year-old are like, wait, what? I thought you just said the canyon was bad. Why are we driving there? And they start, we start freaking out. What if the 5-year-old is in the backseat and he's like, I really want to want candy. I really want candy. And we're on a time crunch and we're running out of gas. But we do what the 5-year-old says he wants to do to the detriment of the other kids in the car. What kind of emotions are those kids gonna feel? This is a metaphor for thinking about the interaction and the interplay between these different parts. So this idea that the inner parts of ourselves, it's not just the ego, it's not just the mind, it's not just the brain. We have an inner community of little spiritual beings that live with us, that are here to protect us, that love us, and ultimately, there's no bad parts. That's the whole point of the book. There's no bad parts. There's no part of ourselves that's actually bad. They always have a positive intent. They always want the best for you. They always love you. 
what happens is the adaptations that they're using, the things that we learned in childhood, the things that they learned in childhood to get our needs met, often wreak havoc in our adult and professional lives. But they're just trying to help us. They're just trying to help. So we got to listen to them. We got to talk to them. We got to have a relationship with them so that they don't have to use those adaptations anymore. So that they feel comfortable in their home within us and they can let go and relax. And when they let go and relax, I mean, for me, the way that I feel is I feel relaxed. I'm like, whoa, like I'm not overthinking as much. I'm able to have alignment. I'm taking aligned action a lot easier. That's what Lacey Phillips is talking about. This is why unblocking is so important because the unblocking process helps you take aligned action, and it also puts you into energetic alignment. And I track this in my journal. I have the vibrational scale here in my journal. I track my emotions every day, right? So the more that I do parts work, the more my frequency starts to rise. The more I rise into these plus 10 frequencies. And this is exactly where I want to be. This is where I want to live because this is where manifestation happens. This is where I feel most authentic. Notice that on the scale here, I added authentic and playful is plus 10 frequency up here. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to live. It's not to say that lower ends of the scale are bad. Lower ends of the scale are absolutely fucking beautiful. That's where we dig into the shadow. That's where we let go of blocks. That's where all the gold is. The gold lives at the bottom of the ocean. It's buried pirate treasure. The low ends of the scale are not bad. Inner child work is one of the things that helps us make use of the low ends of the scale. Digging for the gold, the way that we dig for the gold is the unblocking, it is the inner child work. There's probably other methods for doing it, but this is such a fucking realization for me, guys. Like literally, it's been two years of being like, how do I help my clients in this way? I have so many tools, I'm getting such great results, but there's a piece that's missing and I don't understand what it is. And now I feel like I have a tool that really fucking works and I'm seeing the results for myself. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> okay, this is like vlogception. This is kind of crazy. So I'm watching the vlog that I just posted. This is the second one that I made. And in this vlog, I said that this version of me has no idea what he's doing. So I said, What's my line, bro? <laughs> it's because of the views. It's because it has no views. It's because it has no views. That's why I didn't keep creating them. Oh, I got so sucked up on the views. And the lack of purpose, me not understanding. This version of me, no idea what I was doing. I was just documenting, having fun with it. Okay, this idea that that version of me had no idea. I knew what I was doing. In Conversations with God Book 4, which came out in 2016, I have annotations in which I'm talking about the vlog from a spiritual perspective. See? Social media, blog, vlog the journey. This idea that you can document your evolutionary process, I knew that here, but I couldn't do it because I was blocked. I was emotionally blocked up. I was terrified of actually talking about, oh, I almost fell out of my chair. I was terrified of actually talking about this book, talking about my experiences in video format. So it's not that I didn't know. I was well aware of what my purpose was. I could feel it. I just wasn't ready to actually step into it. And one of the reasons why I wasn't ready to step into it is because I was blocked. I stepped into it periodically. So I'd make videos for a week or two, and then I would get scared and run away. I would start creating again, get scared and run away. And that's been the pattern for the past seven years. Making progress, running away. Making progress, running away. Now I call this idea the authenticity roller coaster. The closer you get to your authentic self, the more scary it becomes, the more those parts start to act up. I just didn't know how to unblock those. I didn't realize that there was that was even happening. It's trippy to vlog really authentically like this and then to go back and re-watch them. This is like, because I'm doing this in the journal, right guys? So the thing that transformed my life with the journal practice is that in the journal, I'm constantly reflecting on my experience. Each day, week, and month, I'm doing a reflection on my life. The vlog is really interesting because I'm seeing it on video. <laughs> and that's why I'm guided to this practice. It's not more or less powerful than the journal, I don't think. I don't know, maybe we'll see. I guess just that on video, it's very public. I don't know, I'm still in the discovery phase here. It's really interesting to watch these vlogs though. It's like reflection inception. It's reflection within reflection within reflection within reflection. So much reflection, so much self-awareness that maybe I'm driving myself insane. It's possible, but my life keeps getting better. And so that's how I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> There's a couple more interesting things that I'm seeing as I edit this vlog or as I watch the vlog. 
So the vlog by nature is kind of disorganized. It's like bouncing around and it's almost kind of disorienting <laughs> to watch because it's like talking about one thing and then we're jumping to a different idea. And it's like, it's a lot of like context switching. And so I'm seeing that I actually want to have some videos that go like 20 minutes in depth on some of these topics, whether it's conversations with God, whether it's parts work, whether it's how improv connects to these things. I'm seeing that there's like a need for supplementary, really in-depth material because the vlog is fun, but I feel like I want more. I feel like I want the in-depth, organized, step-by-step, -step, like walkthrough of what I'm talking about. Yeah, the vlog is like an open journal. It is an open journal. It's unstructured. And I have to become okay with it, allowing it to be unstructured unless I want to structure it. I don't know. I haven't decided on that piece yet. I guess I kind of like the fact that it's unstructured. I also don't have a problem. Like after watching that one, I don't really have as much of a problem with talking more at length, I don't think. Because the context switching does kind of bounce around. I don't know. I'm going to keep playing around with it. As I go back and ref like as I go back and watch them, it's really interesting because I'm like I mean, you see a lot, obviously. Interesting. Okay. Off to wherever we're going next. <laughs> After watching that second vlog, I definitely have the fear that this is like a waste of time. Like I fear that it's not valuable. I fear that it's a waste of time for other people to watch it. My inner peace says like patience. I keep having to remind myself, I'm like, there has to be a reason why this feels exciting to me. There has to be a reason why I keep feeling guided back to this process. So that's what's been coming up for me. I have a fear of what other people think of me. I have a fear of the work that I do not being valuable. It's almost like this people pleaser energy where I'm really afraid of wasting people's time. I work hard on the vlog because I don't want it to be a waste of people's time. This is something that I'm gonna have to dig into a little bit more, do a little bit of IFS on it. Oh, this is coming from like a young part of myself. Yeah, he feels nervous about wasting people's time. It feels that maybe it's like a feeling of not deserving time and attention. So I'm seeing him. A little bit, it's kind of fuzzy. Hey buddy, you deserve time, attention, and love. I fucking love you, I'm here for you. I'm listening even if nobody else is not. Even if nobody else is listening, you are not bothering me and you are not wasting my time. I'm kind of like imagining holding him. I can't see him super clearly, but I can feel a little bit of the energetics of it. So whenever we feel fear arise, oftentimes the fear is a trigger or a block. The triggers and blocks lead us to or the emotion leads us to the, the triggers and the blocks. And the triggers and blocks are usually being held by a part, by a different part of us. So he feels a little bit better. That, that part of me that was creating this fear of the vlog isn't valuable, I'm wasting people's time. This process is too much, this is too crazy. Those fears are coming from a part of myself, a young part, it seems like a really young part. He didn't feel like he was deserving of time and attention. He really feared being annoying, which I fear sometimes too. I mean, that part of me fears being annoying. It fears being annoying, but it also loves being annoying. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that to pop up, but that's literally what I do with parts work. I like start talking to the, to the different part of me. And you know it works because you'll start to feel the emotion lessen a little bit, start to feel more calm. This is the process that's been so helpful for me over the past couple of weeks. And it's the reason why I can continue doing the vlog because it does feel scary. It feels fucking scary to put out, I mean, to talk intimately to the camera and share different parts of my life, to, to deeply share my spiritual practice. I was blocked up about this for seven years. This is the reason why I developed binging, binge eating disorder and gained 40 pounds in three months is because it's terrifying to me. It's the reason why I played video games for 40 hours a week or more, sometimes more than that. There's periods of time where I played Civ Five on this laptop for like 40, 50, maybe even 60 hours a week. I don't know, I would play like 12 hours a day, guys, especially during COVID. So the fact that I'm able to do this and publish it is a big deal for me. Okay, uh, now off to whatever we're gonna be doing next. I think I'm gonna go to yoga. I'm gonna go to yoga, I'm gonna stretch out. I lifted heavy yesterday, I'm feeling kind of tight. Um, and we get to go check out Archipelago. Archipelago is one of my favorite places in Denver. It's a social club that I'm a part of. It's full of wonderful humans. And uh, we can go do like a little tour because you'll see me hanging out there a fair amount. Okay. Look at how aggressively Denver I look right now with my yoga mat, <laughs> skateboard, vlogging setup. <laughs> Welcome to 2024, people.
tightness in the body. This is like my favorite place I've done. Okay, I feel demoralized. My second video posted six hours ago, it has four views. My one before that has 16 views though. Oh my gosh, guys, when I saw the four views, I think two of those are me. The thumbnail is not good. The title is not great either. I probably need to focus on thumbnails and titles more. Oh my gosh, this is like my worst fear. Like putting out art and then no one giving a shit. It's terrible. It's, I guess it's a part of the, it's a part of the process. It's something that I need to move through and that I need to get okay with. Fuck, it's real for me, jeez. Okay, shooting the YouTube video today and only getting four views was very demoralizing. I'm having to remind myself that I need to detach from the outcome. The views don't matter, the process matters. And I like the process. <laughs> yeah, that hurt, <laughs> that fucking demoralized me. <laughs> so what I actually need to do is I need to get better. I need to get better at creating thumbnails. I need to get better at titles. And I also need to be creating short form content. There's no excuse for me to not be creating short form content on a daily basis. So I just went through and shot a little piece today and I'm talking about um, inner child work here. Okay, that's it.